Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. I come to you in the name of the Lord to speak to you today about the God of fortresses. The strange God um, that I spoke to you about yesterday is one and the same. Remember, I explained to you that the word strange there is alien, and it has to do with the alien deception. This strange God that um, will be honored. We are in the book of Daniel. It says, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. When you do a word study into the Greek, well, into the Hebrew or Aramaic or Chaldean language, you would understand that it's, he's going to increase him and give him, glorify him amongst the people and just give him all these things and to divide the land and just honor him as God and allow him to to, to rule, give him rulership over um, the people and he's going to also divide the land of Israel. This strange God, as I said, is an alien, and it is the same, um, one and the same with the God who it says the God of forces. This is Daniel chapter 11, starting at verse 37 through 39 is what I just read. When it says the God of forces, that word is also fortress says, and it has to do with military power. It can be translated also as strongholds. The Holy Spirit has been leading and guiding me to understand that it is speaking of the God of war. Okay, this is an Assyrian God who is called Asher, as in the Asherites, which are the Assyrian, Assyrian people. When you hear the son of perdition, the man of sin, you know that this person is speaking of whom the spirit of Antichrist will dwell in in the last days, um, spoken of in the book of Revelation. And he is also called the Assyrian. And when you look that word up, and once again, the Aramaic, Hebrew, Chaldean, you will see that it is the word Asher, okay? Asher is the god of war. He is the god of forces. He is the god of fortresses. He is the very entity that is going to be worshipped as God. Now, mind you, this spirit is called many things in many places. And the first person who he really used and at a high level was Nimrod. And many of the stories and attributes of this so-called god, whether he be called Asher amongst the Assyrians or whether he be called Mars, Amongst, I believe it was the um, Romans. He, I believe, he has another name. If you're if you're going to refer to him through the Greek name, he is. Um, most of those attributes are stories that come from the life, or exaggerated stories that come from the life of Nimrod. Okay, now there are many Assyrian gods. One of which was called Sin, which is the moon god. Sin al Elat, he was called in the Middle East before his name became al Elah, and then it became Allah. See, the name just changed, but it is the same name. Like you can say Jerome, you can say Heronimo. Okay, Spanish, French, same person, different name. Roni comes from Heronimo. It's Italian and it's Spanish. Okay, Her Heronimo and Jerome come from Hieronymus. In the Latin, which means holy or sacred. Okay. Also, Roni in the Hebrew means my joy, my song. It comes from the word Ron, which means joyful sound. Many people call me Ron. It is Roni, but I don't mind because I know that Roni comes, Roni in the Hebrew comes from the word Ron. Okay. Now, I explain that to you to help you understand how even though he's called many different things in many places, it's the same spirit. It goes back to Nimrod, okay, the god of forces, the god of fortresses. Types and shadows. Nimrod is a type and shadow of the last and final Antichrist, man of sin, son of perdition, the Assyrian, the beast, okay. The Bible says that he's going to honor this god which is a strange God, but it also says that he's going to magnify himself as God, and this is in later scriptures, which I cannot find at this time, where it's, and I, if whenever the computer sometimes have issues when I try to open different tabs and things while I'm recording, but you know that it says that he will enter into the temple of God's um, 
declaring, I believe it says declaring himself to be God. Let's actually just, I'm going to try and hope and pray to God that I don't have some sort of strange issues um, while trying to upload this word and give to God's people, okay? Sitting in the temple. In the temple of God is what I want to type in and see what we have here. Because I would like to really see exactly the exact word for word what it says. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Understand that the simple fact that he is sitting in the temple and has done what no ruler has been able to do, which is divide Israel and bring peace to the Middle East and sit in the temple. And I do believe they will build a, a temple. Some say will be in Bethlehem. It's biblically possible. Um, it could be on the Temple Mount. That's biblically possible as well. It could start in Bethlehem and move. It could be Hebron, which where David ruled at before he moved ruled in Jerusalem, when um, Jerusalem, which is in the land allotment to the tribe of Benjamin, but Benjamin dwelt and became a part of the kingdom, the southern kingdom of Judah, um, when the kingdom once again split apart after the time of David. So we have to, as I said, you know, cannot lead to our own understanding. I have always felt like, you know, the Antichrist, of course, is going to copy Jesus. So he probably will start and be in Bethlehem doing something or another before he moved to Jerusalem. And um, so I do believe that this is possible. Um, because Bethlehem is also referred to as the city of David, um, as well as Jerusalem. So in any case, I don't want to get off track and I have to remember where I was. He's going to exalt, thank you, Jesus. He's going to exalt himself above all that is called God. Why is that? Because everything that's on this earth that most people call God or call godly, he's going to exalt himself above that. We will have, religions have rules, regulations, and moral standards, but he will set up a moral standard that he considers to be above. God says man and a woman, he will say opposite. Everything that God says, he will say opposite. He will oppose God. He will exalt himself in his heart. Once he's sitting in that temple, he's going to really be like, see, I have proven that I am God. He's going to exalt himself above everything that is called God. But at the same time, he's going to also honor this strange God. He will be able to do that because that strange God is going to tell him that he has come many times. He has used many people, but that he's choosing to use this person finally and that he's going to set up a kingdom and for this person and use this person. He will probably tell him, look, I'm going to come in to your body and live in you or I'm going to endow you with power, the fullness of what I am I'm going to give to you. He's going to convince this person that he is like God the Father and that he, he's going to convince this person that I'm going to that I'm going to use you the way God the Father uses Jesus the Christ. You understand that's why he's the antichrist because he's mimicking, he's pretending. He's, he's, he's going to think that he is the savior of the world, the Messiah. This entity is going to tell him that Jesus is just like all the other Buddha and Muhammad and, and all these other people that um that he has used and he's going to say that he has come he, he himself this strange god is going to say that he has come many times in the form of allah and yahweh and all these different gods and he has chosen many people to be his vessel he's going to say look i'm going to use you as my vessel and your kingdom is going to be an everlasting one this is a lie but he's going to believe it and probably allow this entity to possess him so then this entity inside of him is going to be the one declaring that he's god you see and even if, if and or before he possesses this person, of course, or he may just tell him these things and sort of do give him some sort of demonic powers and then go on and say he's going back to his kingdom or his planet or his whatever. But this person is going to still see themselves as God, just as Jesus Christ said, look, I am the God, just the son of God. As the Bible says that the fullness of God dwelt in him bodily. The fullness of this entity at one point is going to dwell in him bodily. He's going to be possessed the lord is saying don't back away from that because it shall be he's going to be possessed by this entity so he's going to honor this entity but then at one point this entity is going to be in him and he's going to be declaring himself as god he's going to be seeing him sitting in the temple and, and filling up at least to himself like he is god and he's going to exalt himself above all of the religions and all of the moral godly standards which we have on this earth 
while at the same time honoring this false god, which is none other than the dragon. That word dragon, I want to look that up because it, it has to do with, when you go into the roots, it has to do with, with looking, to look, to look at, which may have to be, have to do, which may symbolically have something to do with pride because we know that the devil had pride in his heart. And when you then look at, um, there's another word, Nimrod, and you go and trace the, the roots, you see that there was a similarity between that, 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 that word look was in the definition, again, when you go back into the roots. So you see the connections between Nimrod and the dragon and, the, and, and Asher and the god of war and um, all of those things like that. Also, what I don't want to forget to mention is it says the desire of woman. woman. When you look, <clears throat> praise God, we have good men and women of God who have studied to show themselves approved. And when you look at your concordances and at the side notes and things and some historical studies that have been done, you will see they were referring to an actual goddess who was worshipped. And she was, I guess, one of her titles was the desire or the delight of women. It says, nor the desire of women. He's going to let me go back and read it right here for you. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of woman. The word nor is not in the original text. So it should say, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, the desire of woman, or any God. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, it should say, neither shall he regard the desire of woman. It's not that he's not going to have a desire for woman. It can mean that at one very basic, simple level. But at the same time, it, there's deeper revelations and deeper understandings like God spoke about the seasons. When it says you're not going to know the seasons, he's talking about appointed times, appointed feasts. But then when the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to give us the ability to know the times and the seasons, which before the Holy Ghost came, God kept it in his authority. But then God gave us authority over all the powers of the enemy and gave us the ability to know times and seasons. That's a deeper level, but on a basic level, when you're dealing with, like, say, African American people who during this during this time of right after slavery and things like that, didn't necessarily weren't allowed to read, and then once Black people started really reading and reading the Bible, it has been in the African American community that that they took from from the revelation they got from that scripture was that when it's time for Jesus to come, the weather patterns would be really messed up, and we would not know the seasons. And it does actually mean that as well, which is why God has been ministering to us about the weather, which is why it snowed. On Easter Sunday, we had snow flurries here in D.C. when I, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I revealed to my friend that we were in the last days. I felt like the end of the world, we, we had entered, like we were in, the world was ending. I said, I think I just get this feeling like this, like all of a sudden out of nowhere that this, like the world is ending. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, we won't know the seasons. And I said, well, if that's the case, it will snow on Easter. We had flurries. Then just this year, the Lord impressed upon me that the same thing would happen, but in greater a bigger or greater sign and I thought oh Lord so it's going to probably snow somewhere like I guess during the summer or something and it'll be like a lot of snow and that did indeed happen so you see how there's levels so yes it can mean that he won't regard the desire of women in that sense it does not mean he will be a homosexual it could mean he could be a bisexual it could mean that he's rude and doesn't care about the feelings of women and care about the fact that he should spend time with his wife and not be you know so caught up in work it could mean lots of different things but what the Lord showed to me like I said, as I did my studies even today, is that it was speaking of a specific goddess, and her title was the desire of women, women, or the delight. She was the, known as the delight of, of women, like I guess, in other words, the greatest of all women. And of course, this is the goddess Easter, just like Mary is, the, the Muslims refer to her as the greatest of all women, which would be, or the most blessed of all women the blessed version it's the same thing as saying the, the delight of women that's because she is the goddess easter but it is concealed you understand concealed by deception do you understand also the messiah himself was known as the desire of women because they knew that the messiah would be born through a jewish girl and every jewish girl wanted to be that girl through whom through whom the messiah would come the Bible says your desire shall be towards your husband, which means what women desire, the, the most natural, pure desire for a woman is to want to have a husband and a family. So for a person to not regard the fact that, well, okay, women should have a husband, but their husbands are somewhere trying to marry other men. Women should want to have children and should desire that, but the babies are being killed. You understand? So even that is a re type of revelation. And that's what the Lord gave to me 
one day and I looked up Prophet JC. You guys can look him up right here. And I saw his video and he said the same exact revelation. I did not make that video. Servant of God 346 said does not do, do not hide your light, which a lot of times I don't make videos about things. And then when I get confirmation from other prophets and people on YouTube, I'm like, oh, my, it's like just amazing. It blows my mind. And in a lot of cases, I still just don't make the video because I say, well, the word is already out there. So to me, I, I feel like I'm just humbling myself and stepping back. And I saying, oh, yeah, the Lord showed me that, too, especially when it's after the fact. I didn't want to be guilty of that today. So I went ahead and gave you what I feel the Lord gave me and praise God. Everything my computer is working just fine. I didn't want the video to be over 10 minutes. The Holy Spirit is going to always have his way, as they say in the Pentecostal church on the programs. This service <laughs> is under the control of the Holy Spirit. Um, so, you know, schedules may change and things, praise God. But, yes, he gave Prophet JC that same revelation, and um, I was blown away. But what really blows me away is the fact that God left us so much that he sent his son, Jesus the Christ, to die on the cross for our sins so that we can have eternal life. If you believe that Jesus Christ was sent by God, that he was born of a virgin, lived a life free of sin, and that he died on the cross, was buried for three days, he rose on the third day with all power in his hands. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he is on his way to get us very soon. If you would like to be accounted worthy to escape all these very horrible things that you have been hearing about on the news and on YouTube, the things that are coming during the apocalypse, Armageddon, they've made fun of it in the movies and everything. Scientists in every religion of the world, they know it's coming. If you want to be in heaven, having a great time, we're going to all have a really big party, and it's going to be more fun than you can even humanly imagine. If you want to be a part of that, you have to accept Jesus Christ into your heart, and I suggest you do it today because you may not even be living in the morning. God bless you. I love you, and I will see you soon.